Well, uh, good morning. Uh, this morning I would like to talk about Psalm 104. And uh, uh, I'd like to start with uh, just a, a, a short summary of the life of uh, Sir Robert Grant. Uh, and uh, I believe that Sir Robert Grant was acquainted with kings and such. His father was uh, a member of the British Parliament and later uh, he became a chairman of the East uh, India Company, which was a, a big a big uh, company for sure um, at the time. Uh, following uh, his, in his father's footsteps, a young uh, Grant was elected also to Parliament and then he also became director of the East uh, India Company. In 1834, he was appointed governor of Bombay and uh, in that position, he became greatly loved. And so there is a medical college in India that was named in his honor. So <clears throat> late in his life, Grant wrote a hymn, and the hymn is based on Psalm 104. Uh, and there, there's this progression in this hymn that he wrote that describes our relationship with God. It goes like this, maker, defender, redeemer, and friend. And I think that's how <coughs> our relationship with God um, uh, progresses. Uh, we know God first as our maker. Then, even before our conversion, He is our defender. We know Him then as redeemer. And finally, we walk, we learn to walk with Him day by day with Him. We then know Him as friend. So, listen to the first verse of this uh, hymn that Grant wrote. O oh, worship the King, all glorious above. O oh, gratefully sing His power and His love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise. Now, having read the, the hymn, let's read uh, a few verses from the psalm that inspired that hymn. And here's how it goes. Praise the Lord, my soul. Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and with majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes the winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. And so, uh, uh, if you uh, look at this psalm and you were kind of, you organize it according to, you know, what the verses are talking about, uh, you would find this. Uh, first it starts about light, and then uh, the heavens and the waters, and then the land and vegetation. Then it talks about the sun, the moon, and the stars, and then fish and birds, and then animals, uh, people, and then the systems to sustain them, starting at verse 21. Now, what's interesting with that is that this is actually one of the Psalms that parallel another passage of Scripture, in this case, Genesis chapter 1, the creation of the world. So this is uh, what uh, this um, Psalm is worshipping, if you will, the creation of, uh, of the world. I think we sometimes take for granted that we shouldn't see nature around us as something to be worshipped. Um, all religions of the past would worship uh, nature, right? Uh, whether it's the sun or the animals or whatever it was, it was always about worshipping nature. Science in the modern age has, uh, in some ways, uh, pulled the curtain uh, for us to see, or at least partly to see, um, the so-called Wizard of Oz that's behind that curtain, you know, who's pulling all of the strings, and uh, I say partly. It's kind of like a child coming into his teenage years and, and realizing that his father doesn't know everything, and so their idolization is kind of dampened, right? Actually, though, I don't think worship is based on the wonder of what we don't know as much as it is based on the wonder of what we do know. Um, either way, 
It's a choice that we make. We may not today worship nature as uh, all other religions of the past uh, have done. But that doesn't mean that we now automatically, because we have science, you know, that we turn to God, um, the God of creation. No, either way, um, uh, um, many uh, even today have replaced the worship of nature with the worship of uh, ourselves or, or nothing, or people like to think it's, it's nothing, but it's never nothing, because we were designed to worship. We were designed to worship. God created us that way. And, uh, you know, the other day, um, you know, my son and I, we were studying the sounds of birds, just to hear what certain birds sound like. And, uh, you know, we were in the backyard and we heard a bird and we both looked at each other and we knew which bird that was. That was the cardinal. Um, <clears throat> the cardinal has a very specific call, right? It, it goes, cheer, 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 birdie, birdie, birdie. Uh, and, and so here, I'm teaching you something about, <laughs> about birds. But it, it actually does sound like that. It says, cheer, 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 birdie, birdie, birdie. And so as, her, as soon as we heard this, oh, cardinal must be around. And so we started looking around, and sure enough, there he was, all red with his, you know, with his uh, fan on top of his head there. And uh, there's there's the cardinal all happy in the evening and uh, looking for food and uh, uh, my son was thinking well hopefully he'll he'll uh, he'll you know make his home in the, in the, the bird uh, house that he made that we hung in the tree there uh, you know nature is so intricate and so beautiful it is a decision however to turn to God and to worship him for what he has made open your eyes look for those things that will remind you to focus on the creativity the goodness the wisdom of our caring Heavenly Father take a fresh look today at the people the animals the insects the plants around you God your God made them all let's learn to worship and to praise him. Can I read the final verse of that hymn by Grant? It goes like this. Frail children of dust, and feeble as frail, in you do we trust, nor find you to fail. Your mercies, how tender, how firm to the end, our maker, defender, redeemer, and friend. Lord bless you today. Oh,